Okay, in this video we're going to continue on with our sequence of blinky LED sketches. Um, so this will be um, our fourth one, where here instead of having uh, tactile switch one uh, control directly the value of the uh, LED or the state of LED two, the yellow one, we're going to uh, make tactile switch one toggle uh, the state of LED2. Um, and so uh, we're going to implement some logic here in our sketch. So this will look fairly similar to our um, our Blink Millies 3 sketch in terms of the setup and the variables and things like that. But we're introducing here also a Boolean which is going to represent that we've seen switch 1 go back low after it's been high. So uh, tactile switch one is a momentary switch, which means that it's only, uh, you know, it only is high when we push it. And we want to remember that we've seen it go high and then see it go back low before we toggle uh, the LED again. And so we're going to use this global Boolean variable to keep track of that for us. So here in our initialization, we're doing all the same stuff as we did before, where we set um, the LED um, LED pins to be outputs, and we set uh, the uh, switch pin to be an input, and we initialize LED1 high and LED2 low, and we're going to remember the time um, that we set LED1 high to keep track of the blinking, and then we're going to set switch1 went back low to true as an initial value, um, and um, then we're going to enter the loop function here. Okay, and so we're going to we're going to start out by checking the millis timer and see if it's time to flip the state of LED one to keep track of the blinking uh, behavior of the green LED, just like before. And um, then what we're going to do is we're going to read uh, the value of switch one. And since we're going to have to do that a couple of times, what we're going to do here is use the digital read to read switch one and test to see if its value is equal to high. And so the result of this Boolean expression is going to be true or false. So switch one high is a Boolean. It's a local variable here. It's a local Boolean variable that reflects uh, the truth or falsity of this condition that switch one is high at the time that this bit of code is executed. And so uh, the logic that we're going to use to control the second LED is if uh, switch one went back low, which means that it's, it's fair game to toggle LED two when we see switch one go high. So when that happens and we've seen switch one go high, we're going to flip the state of LED two and then set this Boolean global variable to false and so that will act as a guard to make sure that on the next time around the loop here, when, let's say, uh, switch one is still high, we don't immediately toggle LED uh, two again. So we have to wait until we've seen LED, uh, switch one go back low before we're going to um, toggle LED two the next time we see switch one high. So else if um, it's not the case that switch one, but one went back low, and it's not the case that switch one is currently high, so that means switch one is low. Then we say switch one went back low, gets set to true. And so this bit of logic allows us to turn our momentary tactile switch input into something that has uh, some state. So it's like a toggle switch instead of a momentary switch in effect. And so let's send this out to the board. And let's see if it's running. Yeah, so if I push the if I push the button, you can see the LED toggles. Except there it did something weird. It went back off again. So on, off, on, off, on, off, on. So it's working reasonably reliably. Oh, there it went back off again. So 
So it seems to be sort of working, but every once in a while it does something weird. It seems to not register the single button press as a single button press. Now, what's going on there? Well, this is a phenomenon called bounce. And to show you what's going on, I've got these, um, I've got the tactile switch one here. Uh, I'm looking at it with an analog discovery. And so if I can pull that up, and every once in a while it loses communication with my analog discovery, which is not so good. But I've got, uh, I've got it set to uh, trigger on channel one, which is the one I'm using to look at the tactile switch. And um, I've got the thing set up in what's called normal mode. And what's going on? I did not ask you to get big. Hopefully this will maintain communication long enough for me to show what's going on here. So I've got this in normal mode, which basically sits and waits for a level crossing in the direction I've specified here, the rising edge, uh, and I've got the, the level set to two and a half. So when I push the button here, you can see it takes a single sweep. And there's an instance where I've got something funny going on. I've got a little glitch here. So there's multiple transitions per push. And you can see that happens not every time, but sometimes it happens and it looks kind of crappy. And so what can happen is that you have this little springy thing and it can make multiple openings and closings when we, uh, when we push it. And so that phenomenon is called bounce, and the Arduino is fast enough that it can actually see things on this tens of uh, to hundreds of microsecond time scale. And so our one button push registers as multiple button pushes, so we get multiple high and low transitions, and it's unpredictable. And so sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. And so we need to find some way of dealing with that. So this, this phenomenon, like I said, is called bounce, and the process of fixing it is called debouncing the tactile switch. Okay, this wasn't an issue when we were doing the, the momentary one because we can't perceive the little fast on and off flashes that might have been there when the LED was going on and off. But now that we're interested in the thing switching once every time we push the button, now it becomes an issue. So there's a couple of different ways to deal with bounce. One is kind of a circuit way, and that would involve um, connecting an RC low-pass filter up between the tactile switch that is subject to bounce, and then uh, basically you're low-pass filtering these fast events. And then you usually follow that up with some, uh, you know, digital buffer that has some kind of hysteresis, um, and that um, that's a fairly complex um, solution. Uh, unless your your hysteretic input buffer is uh, something that's built into the input pins of the the microcontroller. And so uh, generally, it's going to be better probably to go with a software or firmware solution. And that's the one we're going to take a look at. OK, so we can put the analog discovery away. And the idea here is that we're only going to sample the state of the switch at an interval that's guaranteed to be longer than 
this bounce phenomenon, which is a fairly transient phenomenon. Usually it only lasts a few hundred microseconds to maybe a, a millisecond or two. And so what we're going to do is we're only going to sample the value of the switch every 10 milliseconds in this case. Um, and that should basically uh, guarantee that we're not going to see multiple transitions because of bounce. Um, and so this is called debouncing uh, in firmware. And Blink Millis 5 implements a simple uh, firmware debouncing. And so here we've got our blink interval, but we've also got a debounce interval. And in, in addition to the blink time global variable, we have a debounce time global variable. And we're going to basically use that same mechanism that we have been, we've been using to blink the LED at a certain interval uh, to uh, only sample the, uh, the tactile switch at this uh, 10 millisecond interval in this case. Okay, so 10 milliseconds is a sampling 100 times a second, and that's plenty fast for uh, sort of a human input device, a human user interface device, like a tactile switch. Okay, so let's, uh, let's walk through this. So um, our initialization is pretty much the same as it was before, except now we are also initializing the debounce time to be the same as blink time. And down in our loop function, we're going to be taking the same code that we had to introduce or to, to check the state of switch one and to do the logic to see that we made sure it's gone back low again after it's been high. But we're also only, we're going to guard this inside of an if statement. And uh, we're only going to do this if it's time to check, uh, check the state of the button. So if t is greater than or equal to debounce time plus debounce interval, we're going to do this stuff that we did before all the time. And then we're going to remember um, t as the next de uh, as debounce time so that we can check it 10 milliseconds from now. And so what, what effect is this going to have? Well, push this out. And we're not going to look at the waveform, but in this case, you'll never see it go off and on or on and off in quick succession because of bounce. So if we were to monitor or to look at um, the state of the voltage on the switch one input, we would still see the bounce phenomenon happening. But because the firmware is kind of ignoring it uh, for most of the time and only checking it once every 10 milliseconds instead of once every 10 microseconds, like it might be doing if it were just running full tilt, um, we're, we're going to get much more robust behavior. Okay, so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.